This is a sample of the type of videos I put up on my Patreon membership. The longer videos with lots more voiceovers and tips and techniques. On the Patreon membership, I'm able to upload documents to the Patreon platform. So it allows me to put drawing outlines up there, the sketches that I use for my watercolour paintings, etc. And I also upload the finished painting as well. This is going to be a step-by-step -step tutorial suitable for beginners of a winter landscape with silver birch trees, one of my favourite subjects. So I really hope you find this tutorial useful in helping you to make a decision whether you would like to join my membership. So let's get started. I just thought I'd show you the finished painting first of all and I'm only going to be using three colours to achieve this plus Winsor & Newton's white gouache. This is the reference photograph and I'm just going to paint the left hand side of the photograph so already I'm making some adjustments. This is the list of the materials I'll be using in this tutorial and a full list can be found in the description below along with links if you'd like to purchase any of them. So here is the sketch of this little scene. Now if you look at the reference photograph, I've only sort of got taken the left hand side just to keep it nice and simple. I've actually drawn the outline with watercolour pencils so it sort of dissolves when you're painting with it so you're not left with pencil lines. That's quite a nice little tip there for you. And I've chosen the blue because it was the most sort of harmonious colour to go with this painting. And just to say a sketch outline for this tutorial will be available on the Patreon membership. I'm just using my framing tape now to you know mask around the edge of the painting to give a nice white border and I'm using the tape now as to get the painting at an angle so the paint can flow down nicely. I'm using just three colours. I'm using burnt sienna, quinacridone gold and ultramarine. You could use cobalt blue, Windsor red and raw sienna. You'll get so much control just using these three colours. It's more enjoyable just knowing which colours to go to. Colour, colour mixing can be quite daunting so I hope just sticking to those three colours will really help you and you can learn how to really get a variety of colours just using three colours. What I'm doing now is I'm using my large flat brush, it's a soft brush and I'm wetting the sky area with clean water. I've mixed up a puddle of ultramarine, so sort of quite a watery puddle. I'm using my size six brush and I'm painting sort of a little bit of the blue sky in between the trees and above those distant trees, wet into wet, just to make sure I get all the blue that I need there. Always keep loading your brush as well, make sure you have plenty of paint on your brush. It gets the paint flowing nicely, the colours look more vibrant and transparent and it stops the paint and the painting from drying out. I've just added a little dilute bit of burnt sienna, very watery, just below the blue and a little, I've left a little gap as well for a cloudy bit so the, they don't mix together, there's a little bit of a white gap there. It's um, quite a lovely colour actually, burnt sienna, very versatile and mixed with the ultramarine, it does make a beautiful grey. I'm using the flat brush now just to sort of come up from the bottom of those distant trees up to the sky where the burnt sienna is just to blend it and I'm wetting below the water's edge as well now. So um, just in between the trees, using the tip of my flat brush, really sort of getting that sort of water on there, getting it soaking into the paper so I can paint wet in wet and it gives me lots of time as well. Don't worry if the watercolour pencils bleed a little, that's what they're supposed to do. You should still have an echo of your drawing. I'm just applying now a mixture of the quinacridone gold and the burnt sienna, sort of just trying to be sort of as random as I can, but I'm leaving little gaps as well for the snow. So I'm putting some warm colours in the snow. So don't worry about these. These will fade off as well when they dry, but it'll give the snow a beautiful colours and it's sort of reflecting the sky as well. I'm mixing up a little bit more burnt sienna now. Now, 
for those of you that might be worried that you might your this paint now that I'm putting on the silver birch trees might bleed into your sky dry it on the pre this stage just before this so you don't have that but I've just gone straight ahead taking the risk but um, if you're worried about that please blow dry it beforehand and then start painting the trees wet on dry and I've just forgot this little bit of sky in here I thought it was a tree branch so I'm just putting that in as well just sort of um, pushing up a little bit of water to fade it. I love this little bird box. I'm just putting a bit of the quinacridone gold, a touch of the burnt sienna, just a little tickle here and there, because obviously it's quite a light colour, and I'm just giving the essence of, you know, the sort of colours that I've used on the silver birches as well. I'm mixing up some ultramarine now and quinacridone gold, a bit of a milky wash, and I'm painting this wet into wet on those distant trees and it's just a very pale green blue blue green or mid green um, it doesn't matter so just get this in there wet into wet so it's all soft and at the top there you can just use the tip of your brush as well to show the tops of those fir trees and I'm just adding a little bit more now slightly creamier this time so I'm going to be painting damp into wet so you can see that I'm really push my brush forward there just to show you there's no paint coming off that brush because there's hardly any water in there so it's damp paint and I'm painting on a wet surface and I'm just trying to get some sort of little bit of texture of those trees not too much I want it to fade back to create distance I've added a little bit more blue to that green as well to sort of make it a little bit darker not too dark because again I don't want it coming forward but it's just trying to get that density in those trees there and uh as you see there, I've just made my hand go up and down. I'm actually just going up and down, up and down, using the tip of my brush so I get a nice point for the top of those trees. It's a good little tip there. Now, there's quite a bit of painting here. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm paint pretty fast, really. So if you're at all worried about things drying, work on a smaller scale until you build your confidence. And then, you know, as you get slightly larger, you'll be a lot more confident and painting quicker, just knowing what you're going to do. So, yes, do paint smaller and you'll have more time. I've mixed up more ultramarine here into that quinacridone gold and I'm painting using the side of my brush now as well. When you use the side of your brush, less paint pours out. When you use the tip, more paint pours out. So if you want to sort of do a side brush, dry brush, and putting out damp paint it creates more darks there at the bottom as well I'm putting on a quite a steely blue gray here on the water area using my size 10 brush wet into wet or damp into wet in this case here and the mixture is ultramarine and burnt sienna just a touch of burnt sienna and I'm just sort of very gently brushing this paint on try to do the minimal amount of paint marks and that way the paint just looks so much fresher I'm using sort of quite neat creamy burnt sienna using my size six brush and just painting vertical lines damp into damp in the water just to sort of create some sort of warm reflections in there. I'm also using a mixture of the quinacridone gold and the ultramarine to make a nice dark green just to reflect these distant trees and I'm using my size 4 brush to do that and just make sure there's not too much liquid on your brush make sure the paint's creamy so it doesn't run into your paint I've rinsed off my brush now taken off all the paint and I'm just lifting out now letting the hairs of the brush soak up some of the paint to create some soft highlights in the water it's called lifting off it's quite effective I'm doing the same thing now with some kitchen towel and lifting off at the on the bottom of the riverbank there just to create a little bit of light almost to create some sort of the snow at the bottom of the trees as well using my size 4 brush now I'm using ultramarine with a touch of the quinacridone gold just to put some darker trees just at the bottom a little bit of darks and details there they will fade back but make sure there's no liquid hardly any liquid in there no water that is just paint so it just sort of doesn't run into your distant trees now is a good time to blow dry your painting again and what I'm doing now is I'm wetting the surface of this silver birch trees and I'm going to paint some of the shadows now wet into wet so I'm wetting it with my size 10 brush just carefully going in and around the little bird box there and I'm mixing up some ultramarine and burnt sienna and I'm just making sure it's kind of like a 50 50 mix so you've got a, like a sort of a mid darkish brown here and I'm painting this wet into wet on the right hand side 
of this silver birch tree and I'm making sure the light is coming from the left. If it runs too much over to the left, just lift off with a little bit of kitchen towel or as I did before there with a sort of brush that's been cleaned off and damp and let the brush soak it up. I'm putting on a much stronger mix now of the ultramarine and burnt sienna, a little bit more blue this time than brown. So it's a bit more of a greyish colour and I'm painting this damp into wet with my size 10 brush. If you find you want to use a smaller brush, just go ahead, whatever makes you feel comfortable. I'm mixing up now some of the burnt sienna and it's quite a creamy mix with a tiny touch of the blue and I'm just putting some of the markings in now on this silver birch tree here and there there's some wonderful textures on this tree here and I'm just sort of putting it here and there just have a look at the photograph and just try and keep it random as well I mean obviously the photograph is very helpful but you want to sort of put your own stamp on it as well and um, I'm using my size 6 brush to do this the paint is quite creamy so it doesn't run these marks you want to stay there so damp into damp the paint marks don't move so you get soft edges so I'm just putting them here and there and uh, just enjoy it it's there you know and vary the marks as well you can make some sort of more of a darker blue with a touch of brown and then some with about 50 50 of the paints so you've got a sort of dark brown I'm putting a little bit of dark at the bottom there so you've got that contrast between the snow and the bottom of the tree now make sure before you use your plastic card make sure the paint is damp um, don't make it if it's too wet this won't work but I'm pulled off some of those sort of lighter marks on the birch trees there and it looks so effective so if you find the paint runs back in wait a couple more minutes and then test it again because otherwise if you keep going with that plastic card it could tear a hole in your paper what I'm doing now is exactly the same thing I did with the tree on the left. I'm putting the mid-tone on, wet into wet, by wetting the tree trunk first and then putting the darker blue-grey on and keeping that on the right-hand side, keeping the light on the left. And I've just put a little bit here, wet on dry actually, I thought I'd go for, for this the um, trunk here behind. I've used the Burnt Sienna. I've swapped my size 4 brush as well just for the control. I've added a little bit more dark on this central tree here just because it, it was fading back a little bit you can always make adjustments just make sure that what you put on isn't wetter than the surface of your painting otherwise you're going to get lots of backgrounds and things like that so I'm repeating again on this far right tree here with the sort of mid-tone brown with the burnt sienna and then dropping in the greyish color wet in wet or damp into damp this is a creamier wash now using my size 10 brush really be bold with these darks remember with watercolour they dry back so pale so try and go for it I'm not going to use the plastic card on that right hand tree just yet it's quite wet but I have got the opportunity now of just lifting off with my plastic card you see I just tested it there on the right hand tree it was too wet so it's always good to test now if you're not sure about this technique do practice it on a bit of paper first of all just to give yourself some confidence now I'm painting some of the details now on this little bird box using my size 4 brush I've just used a mixture of ultramarine with a tiny touch of the burnt sienna you can see already just using these three colors looking at the painting now even though it's halfway through how much color variety you can get just using these three colors what I did there is I rinsed my brush took off the excess water off on the kitchen town just to give me some control about how much water goes onto the painting as I sort of blended that burnt sienna. I'm mixing up a really pale wash of ultramarine here using my size 4 brush, rinsing the brush, taking the excess off and then just softening this sort of snow at the top of the bird box there just to blend it in so it doesn't stand out. I'm painting some shadow on the right hand side using the ultramarine and the burnt sienna. Oops, a little bit too much ultramarine there. So not to fear, I just lift it out with my kitchen towel just to soften it back. I'm just putting a little bit more dark on the outside rim of the top of the the roof of the bird box here and a little bit of a soft dark just in that little hole there and I will make that too dark so I'm going to put that a little bit more detail in that later on so now it's time to lift off on that right hand tree if you do forget to do that don't worry just sort of wet it very gently with your brush let it sort of soak in a bit and then test it again so you can always scrape again later that's because watercolor 
isn't permanent and we're able to lift off. I'm mixing up a little bit of ultramarine with a tiny speck of the burnt sienna just so it doesn't look too blue and I'm painting the snow area wet on dry using my size 10 brush. Make sure you have dried your painting before you do this. I've got my puddle of ultramarine on standby. I load my brush all the time and paint this wash on there. Try not to go back over the same paint marks, keep them nice and fresh and leave some of the underpainting. So you've got, as you look at the reference photograph, you can see the some of the sunlight on the snow. So you wanna leave those gaps there. And I'm putting, making it a touch darker in the foreground on the left here. So I've had a little bit more blue and a touch more burnt sienna. Just be brave, you know, so to just go for it. If all else fails, just sort of wet that area with clean water and just tease it until you can lift it off again. Wipe all the blue off again. Be gentle that you don't disturb the paint underneath and you can have another go. So don't worry. And also you may find it better then to do that wet in wet, a bit like how you'd paint a sky. So there's always waves around thing so try that out and remember if it does go wrong you can lift off and have another go I've mixed up some of the ultramarine with a tiny touch of the burnt sienna I'm using my size 10 brush and I'm putting on a glaze on this background water or background lake here very gently so I don't disturb the paint underneath. It's to give that dark tonal value to pop out that shape but as you can see you can still see some of those reflections coming through and I put a little bit of dark just at the edge of the snow area damp into damp and I'm just painting in between the trees here just take your time it's wet on dry especially this small sort of negative shape here using the tip of the brush you know just enjoy it try to relax moment to breathe <laughs> so I'm just sort of painting the left hand side here really sort of being careful using the tip of the brush make sure you maybe really load that brush each time as well and I'm just mixing up a little bit of creamy ultramarine touch of burnt sienna and just dropping in some dark creamy paint on the edge there just to kind of really have that dark against light as well where the snow is and on the far river bank as well on the left and the right hand side so it's all sort of continuous along that sort of water's edge on the far river bank there using my size 10 brush this is damp into damp work if it's any wetter than that that will bleed and run into your water i'm mixing up again a little bit of ultramarine with a tiny touch of the burnt sienna and I'm painting a little bit more darks now into the winter trees wet on dry in that sort of up and down motion and I'm going to slow the film down so you can really see the action of my hand and what I'm doing with the brush. So as you can see I've loaded the brush and I'm just going up and down sort of top to bottom top to bottom and it's quite the paper's quite rough so I'm getting a bit of texture there as well with the trees but just sort of going up and down and I'm actually putting a little bit of dark now. I've got some ultramarine with quinacridone gold and I'm just painting around this little bird box. It's kind of like my focal point now, I've decided. And uh, you can see already how it pops out. Just by putting that darker trees in the background, it brings that bird box forwards. And I'm using some of the plastic card now just to pull out and create some texture in the background trees. You don't wanna make those background trees too dark. What I've decided to do, you may not need to do this, but I feel like I need to bring my trees forward a bit more. They're kind of laying a bit flat to the background. Now I'm getting questions, a lot of questions recently about how to make your your paintings look more 3D. This is exactly how to do it. To bring things forward and make other things recede, you can use tonal values, texture, color, mark making, all sorts of things. In this instance, and size of course, in this instance I'm going for the tonal value. So I'm making this quite dark on the right hand side. One is to exaggerate the light on the snow on the little bird box, but also to pull away from those background trees and the water in the background. I've painted this wet on dry using my size six brush and I just softened a little bit of the edge so it's not too harsh, but between the light of the left hand side of the tree and the dark of the right hand side. I'm doing that as I paint this middle tree here, just softening, adding a little bit of water. Now these trees behind this main left hand tree, 
because it's a little bit behind you don't want to give it as much details um, the tree on the left is the star of the show with the bird box the trees on the right or in the middle are kind of like the supporting cast so you want to give them some attention but not as much as the stars of the show and once your paint dries off a little bit and it's damp you can scrape off again with your plastic card and actually I quite like it's really given it depth and detail now by doing this sec sort of second tonal layer of paint and a little bit more lifting off with the card. I'm mixing up ultramarine and quinacridone gold. I'm using my size 4 brush and I'm painting some of those little grasses coming through the snow and I want to sort of you know not to give it too much attention that it comes forward but enough that it's a little bit of detail it sort of balances out those trees as well so I'm just putting a little bit more I've actually mixed the burnt sienna now with the quinacridone gold what I quite like about this photograph is there's lots of warmth in here even though you think of snow and winter as cool I'm putting lots of yummy warm colors in I've actually given it a spatter there as well one is to keep it nice and loose but it's just to give a little bit of texture here and using the tip of the brush just to run along there and if you want really thin marks you can use your plastic card to kind of lift that paint as well to sort of not so much scratch in but just use it to draw out the wet paint and it's quite a nice little thing to do it feels good to do it as well believe it or not just mixed up a little bit of the burnt sienna I've just put a little bit of the base of some of those sort of grasses coming through and just softening with a little bit of water as well so it's not all sort of harsh just grass marks you've got some softness in there as well I'm putting a little bit more marks around the right hand side really sort of have fun with this remember though less is more try not don't get too carried away you want to have that blanket of snow with the light coming through I'm putting a little bit now in the foreground using the same techniques just bigger marks in the foreground that comes forward again that's another thing that creates depth in a painting larger marks warmer colors darker tones more texture lots of spattering as you can see I'm doing here now I've used some of the uh, kitchen towel this time to actually mask out the sky area so if you're worried about little dots in the sky it's a safe thing to do you don't want to have little marks you might have to deal with later unless you want to turn them into some little birds but um, I'm also making some little marks there on some of those grasses I've kept really to the burnt sienna touch of quinacridone gold tiny touch of blue I want lots and lots of warm here um, rather than green grasses that kind of look more spring-like I want to keep that autumnal colors of autumn stroke winter coming through so I'm just making some fine little marks in the foreground there and I'm using my flat brush there just to soften some of those marks in the foreground so our eye doesn't go to them we want I want it on that bird box this is really the supporting cast the grasses so yes you they need attention but not too much I am decided to put a little bit more dark just at the bottom of this tree just to kind of really stand it out and just to kind of um, because it's, it's in the foreground it's right there right in the bottom of the foreground it needs a touch more detail seeing it is the star of the show so I'm using the ultramarine and burnt sienna very very creamy paint using my size 2 brush it's more of a detailer brush and these are darks and details which I like to when I'm heading towards the end of my painting I start putting in my darks and details the question I get most asked for the years the many years I've been teaching watercolor and acrylic painting is how do you know when to finish when do you know when to stop well this is how I finish a painting darks and details you know less is more so and this is the foreground as well so this creates depth the details the darts create the depth as well I'm just sort of balancing it out putting a touch more in this middle distance so you don't want to have too much detail in the foreground nothing in the middle distance because it's going to look a bit odd so I'm sort of balancing things out and putting 
touch more texture now on the star of my show, this left hand birch tree. A little touch again to balance things out on the other two trees. feel like my painting is coming to life you know do you ever get that feeling when you're sort of painting you think you get that almost a aha moment I'm kind of getting that now it's it's quite a pleasant feeling don't always get it um, I'm painting in some of the smaller branches just at the top remember less is more there's lots of branches in the photograph I don't want to put all of those in it's going to be it's going to take away the light for a start so I'm using my size 2 brush and as you saw there a technique I'm using is doing a couple of little flicks and then joining up the branches you get some nice effects that way and I would say practice that as well it really gets you to get some nice realistic looking branches. I've used a mixture of burnt sienna with a touch of ultramarine and as you can see I'm using that technique there again just take your time remember to breathe and make sure the tonal value comes away from those distant trees so it's strong enough. What I'm doing now is I'm turning upside down I know a lot of people find this very helpful um, if you're right-handed painting on the left hand side and left-handed painting on the right hand side but you can turn it sideways as well however you know whatever makes it easy for you there are no right or wrongs here you know it's what you're trying to say these techniques are to help you express yourself to inspire you to paint something of your own this photograph I'm just interpreting I'm not trying to slavishly copy it it's just to give you an idea so I put a few more branches on the left there slightly larger and I'm just put sort of swiftly painting with the tip of my brush some very very thin branches in a quite a random way and I'm just sort of flicking a few on the left here be careful not to put too many on the left I was tempted and then a little alarm went off my head thinking no less is more <laughs> follow your advice and I'm just giving a spatter now and this is to stop me from doing any more painting with these branches and that's enough it gives a little bit of texture and it pulls those branches away from those from the distance it gives the effect of maybe a, a couple of last autumnal leaves left on these silver birch trees I'm mixing up I've cheated there I actually used a bit of pink I just wanted a touch more warmth and I'm just spattering the foreground one last sort of spatter I'm getting a little bit of dark there a bit of ultramarine with the burnt sienna really dark creamy color and I want to paint the star of my show here that's that little hole in the bird box it really does look how it pops that forward I've layered that over the sort of lighter tone that I put earlier I'm putting a touch around the rim on the little sort of rooftop there I'm painting in those darks and details wet on dry I've made a shadow color now using ultramarine with a tiny touch of burnt sienna and I'm just putting a bit of cast shadow from the rooftop and I'm drawing in the shape of the shadow here from the roof on the left hand side and I've got you don't have to do that though you could paint this just as a shape as a wash but I've just drawn that in there make sure if you draw it in it's nice and wet otherwise that will dry a hard edge and I'm just putting in some of the ultramarine watery ultramarine with a burnt sienna wet on dry and because that was a little bit too dark looking I'm just lift off a bit of my kitchen towel and I've got a lovely soft shadow there which works so nicely so I've just got a puddle of white gouache now separated from my other colors make sure it doesn't get contaminated this technique is called spattering a lot of you know I do this hold the brush firmly into your painting hand so hold it sort of three quarters of the way down tap with your index finger of your other hand firmly if the paint doesn't come off just water it down a little bit more and try again tap gently so it doesn't go everywhere and just sort of go here and there and remember less is more you don't want to get too carried away that you actually end up with just a very spattered painting so just enough to give it a little bit of a sparkle to finish off your winter landscape I'm removing the framing tape now to reveal a lovely white 
border it looks so fresh doesn't it brings the painting to life where it was a little bit stubborn there I'm blow drying it to soften the glue to make sure the tape doesn't tear the paper it's a really useful tip that so I'm just removing that there we are voila I'm very pleased with that I love the uh, harmonious colors just because I lost a little bit of light and white on the riverbank I'm using some gouache straight from the tube just to tidy up that edge there you may not have to do that Here's a nice technique. I'm just using the kitchen towel, applying the white gouache to the surface with my brush. And I'm just going to sort of print with the kitchen towel on the side of the tree. So it looks like little bits of snow hanging on the edge on the side of those trees as it is in the photograph as well. And it just creates that little bit of texture. And it's a really nice technique. Make sure there's, it, there's not too much paint on the tissue practice again on a little rough bit of paper what's really good about having this sort of white border it gets you to sort of look at your painting more objectively and I just thought I'd put a little bit of snow as well on some of those main branches just here and there using my size four brush and just using the gouache straight out of the tube. If it's too thick and creamy just add a tiny touch of water to it as well just to finish off so here is the finished painting and I am really pleased with it just because I use those three colours to create that sort of depth and those lovely warm colours as well using the techniques of scratching out and spattering and using wet in wet, damp into wet and damp into damp and wet on dry to get all those sort of different effects to create distance and depth in your painting. I really hope you enjoyed the tutorial and I hope that it inspires you maybe to get your paintbrushes out, your watercolours and have a go at a winter scene. And also maybe you might want to give the membership a try as well. So if you would like to join my Patreon membership, just go to www.karenriceart.com and go to the Patreon membership page and there is a join button there. And just to say thank you in advance if you do decide to join and if you want to check out the tutorials that are available on my Patreon membership, go to my website and you can browse them under different headings, beginners, flower painting, landscapes, seascapes, abstracts, animal painting, street scenes and people as well. So lots of tutorials to suit lots of different tastes and levels. The membership is monthly and you can cancel your membership anytime. So why not give it a try? Thank you so much for watching this video. Happy painting. Bye for now.